Hello everyone, this is our 9070 Carmen Gia Coupe that we converted into a battery powered vehicle. In this video we will discuss the electrical components involved in this conversion. Uh, we first move to the trunk. This is the place where the internal combustion engine was originally mounted. If we open it up, we can see that the ICE is now replaced by a three-phase asynchronous motor with a power of 28 kilowatts. Um, next to this motor we have the inverter, which is in a protective case to prevent dust from entering it. Above this uh, inverter we can see the 3 kilowatt charger. This charger charges the four Tesla modules inside of this car. These Tesla modules are cooled by a liquid cooling system, which is basically just a 12 volt pump, a fan that cools the liquid through the heat exchanger, and of course the liquid itself. Um, here we see the hall sensor. Uh, if we push the throttle pedal, this hall sensor opens and the car will start to accelerate. And here we have the 12 volt battery that is just kept original. In this corner we have the service main switch. If we turn, on, if, if we turn off the switch, then the batteries will be disconnected from the system and we can work safely on the car. Um, we also have the socket. And this is used to charge the car. Let's open it up. Uh, it's just a simple basic socket that's used in a lot of electric cars nowadays. We will now move to the front of the car. Um, here in the front truck where the fuel tank was originally mounted we can see that we have now an aluminum box that contains two of the four batteries. If we open up this box, we can see one battery sitting on top and the one is underneath it. This box is fused inside and we also see these print plates here and this is the canvas of the, 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 of the batteries. Um, we also have this pressure relief valve and this is for when gases expand in this box they can safely escape. On the other side we can see the liquid cooling system we talked about. Um, after this box we see the electrical heating system. Um, this replaced the original ICE which gave its excess heat to the car but now it's done electrically. Let's close this up. Uh, we will now move inside of the car. So this is the back seat. Let me get in first. If we remove the back seat and a safety panel, we can see that the same box is also in the back. Uh, it's basically just the same as the front one. It has a pressure relief valve, a cooling system and it's fused inside. Um, next to this box we can see some other electrical components. The main switch mounted on the back panel, the DC-DC converter that charges the 12 volt battery and some canvas components. If we, mo if we now move to the front um, we see that we made a new dashboard with some switches, an emergency switch, a LED. Um, let me turn on the ignition key. Here on this screen we can see the voltage of the system, the current that's been drawing, the temperature of the battery cells and the amp hours. Um, let me first start with this LED. Um, behind there's also a buzzer. This is for safety reasons, when the key is on and you open the door, this LED lights up and the buzzer makes a sound. Uh, underneath there is an emergency switch, that's just a safety switch. Um, a USB port that can be used to charge your phone. Um, let's now start with the switches. We have one switch that turns on, the, turns on or off the regenerative braking. This is for safety reasons, so regenerative braking starts when you push the brake pedal or you release the throttle pedal. 
Next to this switch we have the switch for the pump. If we turn it on, the batteries will start to cool by the liquid. Um, this switch is for turning the car into reverse or forward. And the last switch is to turn on the ventilator, like this, or turn on the ventilator and the heater. So, this were, this were the main electrical components. Uh, in the next video, we will give this car a ride and we'll keep you updated. Thanks for listening.